after three weeks of city league play, it's a log jam at the top. Four teams entering week four, sitting at two and one, and two of them showcased tonight, Woodward and Rogers. This was a tightly contested game, and just before the end of the first half, the biggest play of the game, Woodward faced with a fourth and five with a minute and a half left. Coach Wilson called a timeout. Instead of running the football, he elected to take a shot to the end zone, trusting in his junior quarterback, Dominic Chismar. Yeah, and Chismar threw a, a perfect strike there and was able to put the, put the ball in the end zone. And all of a sudden, you, you're looking at a 7-0 lead in which you already know was going to be a defensive struggle because the, most of the game had been played between the 30s. And Coach Wilson, he's been aggressive all season long to open the second half. Woodward elected to kick an onside kick, and they recovered. They've recovered an onside kick now in three straight weeks, and they turned that onside kick into points on the board with a Wayne Cosper three-yard rushing but touchdown. Tim Clagg had play-by-play -play du duties live on BCSN2, and he joins us now to break down the weight victory. Woodward and Wade the last couple weeks have had to fight through some adversity. Woodward looked to lean on their 15 seniors tonight, and they would need it. They didn't have an offensive touchdown in the first half. Their lone score when they trailed 14-6 to at the break came off an 80-yard kickoff return in the second quarter. Coach Wilson made some adjustments in the halftime break. The biggest was electing to run the Wildcat with senior Wayne Cosper. Cosper took over this game, scoring three touchdowns in the second half. The biggest play of the game, after they got back, within one in the second half. They elected to go for an onside kick. Coach Wilson gambling and a gamble paid off their fourth onside kick that they've recovered this season. This was the best outing all season long by the offense. When they got rolling, they put up 30 unanswered points and it was just too much ground attack. Wait didn't have an answer. But senior Nicholas Heslett for Wait, he looked tremendous throwing three passing touchdowns as his career comes to a close. It sets up now a rematch of week one between Woodward and the Start Spartans, a game that Woodward won now. They've knocked off Start two times in a row. Next week, they'll go for a conference title, setting up that rematch next Thursday. BCSN's Tim Clagg joins us from Cherry Street with more. Well, this was one of the most highly anticipated rematches from one year ago in the district championship game. Maumee taking on Central. Central came in here as the number one seed. And in that meeting one season ago, it went to five sets. Maumee won the first two. Central battled back, winning, winning the next two to force the fifth set. But unfortunately for Central, that wasn't the case tonight. Maumee came out. They were down in the first set early. Central went on a four-point run, eight to four. But the crucial play in this first set came from Jolie Saab off a block to give Maumee a two-point lead, 24-22. And then Maddie Contact would finish off the first set with a ace to give Maumee a one-game advantage, 25-22. In the second set, it was tightly contested. But Maumee, they've been in a lot of long sets this season, especially a 30-28 victory over Anthony Wayne. They were able to pick up the second set, 26-24. But then... Just too big of a gap for Central to try and come from behind. Maumee came out on fire in the third set, able to put them away in straight sets. But this is a team that's playing very well right now. After a stretch where they lost six matches midway through the season, they've won seven straight matches to end the regular season and in postseason play. And during that time, they've only dropped one set. Their experience paid off tonight. This is the same group that had the deep run with the entire roster back from one season ago when they went all the way to the regional for the first time since 2003, and they were led by their junior tonight. Jolie Saab was amazing. 15 kills, and then the senior, of course, Bryn Brown. We know all about her. She stepped up in that third set, took control, and ended up with 14 kills as well. So Maumee right now punching their ticket back to Wednesday night's district final. They'll take on either Shawnee or Elida coming up Wednesday evening. Northview earned their fourth Northern Lakes League title in the last five seasons. But as they enter postseason play, the big question mark surrounding this team has been their health. Two players, two starters tonight in this match in quarantine. Grant Copen as well as Logan Crandall. 
And then recovering from a concussion, Jonah Meyer Crothers, how was he going to respond? Well, he played terrific tonight. He had a lovely bicycle attempt that went over the top of the cross. But it was the junior, Mr. Reliable, Tony Sejaci. He scored the first goal 12 minutes in this match, and then the second on a lovely ball served in off the assist by Mo Tarico, finding Sejaci for the second goal of the match. That's all Northview would need tonight. The Glass City 200, the finale. The trophy, the race, everybody wants to take home at the end of the season. Dennis Strickland, through the first half, looked very racy, holding off all challengers, including Kaden Lapsovich and Frank Giovanni, but eventually gave way to familiar faces. Yeah, Dennis Strickland, the emotional winner from 2013, so I think every, uh, the crowd, the sentimental favorite, certainly, just didn't have the car, didn't have the horsepower to deal with it. Uh, Brian Bergacker, we thought he had a shot laying back in the weeds. We also thought Kaden Lapsovich, last year's winner, was going to be a factor towards the end of this race. But who emerges but Steve Needles? And we know the heartbreak that Steve Needles has had in this race. So for him to come back out on all those restarts and Stevie Needles to get this win, what a huge emotional lift for the driver of the 14 machine. Finally, Stevie Needles gets the one trophy that's eluded him, his career. He can now take it and place it on his mantle as he holds off all challengers to pick up his first victory in the Glass City 200. Tim Clagg breaks it down. Well, everyone wondered how only playing one game in the last three and a half weeks would affect Central Catholic Fighting Irish. Well, how's this for Rust? The offense scored in four of their first five drives in this game to pull away 28-0. In the first quarter, the rushing attack for Prentice Reasonover, he only needed two rushing touchdowns tonight, his longest run of the night, 44 yards. But they worked on the passing game tonight with senior quarterback Bishop Vargas throwing for four first-half passing touchdowns. But the defense, like they've done all season long, had eliminated the ground attack. They came in here only giving up 25 yards on the ground per a game, and they only gave up and surrendered one first down in the first half. This senior group has been through a lot together. They started as freshmen 0-10, and they've changed the culture. They have found their niche here with eight-man football and have helped rejuvenate this program. Yeah, you know, in, in situations where they weren't sure if they were going to have teams and then COVID hits and they weren't sure if they're going to play it all this year, doing a great job of taking advantage and using that experience that they had as freshmen and having a successful year here so far. And, boy, what a great night tonight for the TC Eagles. This has been a... Very potent offense this season. Matter of fact, they've outscored their opposition after tonight's game 80 to nothing. This is a team that's put 80 goals on the board. The most they've scored this season was 18 in a win over Scott. They came out out of the gates swinging, scoring in the first five minutes of the match. And this is a young group that's hungry and determined. They don't have any seniors on this entire team. But the junior, Sidney Schirmbeck, scored two goals to give them the distance they needed to pitch another shutout. Bowser's reached the Toledo Cup championship now in all five years. They'll take the hardware home with them.